Welcome to One My Black History. I'm your host, Country Boy, and today's episode is about Hollywood versus black history. In particular, the Netflix movie, The Heart of They Fall. The movie assembles a cast of black actors to play legendary black Western figures from across time to tell a fictional story about two rival groups, the Nat Love Gang and the Rufus Buck Gang. While The Heart of They Fall tells a fictional story that departs from actual events, the characters were very real. So who were the historical people behind the characters in The Heart of They Fall? And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, please hit the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at my Patreon page in the description below. And you can find more content like this at my channel and at onemikeblackhistory.com. But without further ado, let's get started. Kathy Cuthy Williams is played by Danielle Deadweiler. Kathy Williams was an African-American woman who enlisted in the United States Army under the pseudonym William Cathy, and she was the first woman to enlist in the United States Army, although as a man. Kathy Williams was born to an enslaved mother and a free father in Independence, Missouri in 1844. Although her father was free, she was technically a slave. During her adolescence, Williams worked as a house slave for the Johnson Plantation on the outskirts of Jefferson City, Missouri. In 1861, Union forces occupied Jefferson City in the early stages of the Civil War. At the time, captured slaves were officially designated as Union contraband, and many were forced to serve in the military in support roles as a cook or a laundress or as a nurse. So William served as an army cook and a washerwoman in the Union Army. And in this role, she accompanied the infantry all over the country and served under General Philip Sheridan, witnessed the Red River Campaign, the Battle of Pea Ridge, and traveled with the military to Iowa, Missouri, Louisiana, and Georgia. When the Civil War was over, Congress passed an act authorizing the establishment of the first all black units in the military in 1866. Despite a prohibition on women serving in the military, Williams enlisted for a three year engagement in the United States regular army, passing herself off as a man under the false name of William Cathy. Williams was assigned to the 38th United States Infantry Regiment, assuming she passed a medical examination. This exam should have outed her as a woman, but at the time, the Army was not requiring full exams, so she was quickly found fit for duty. On February 13, 1867, Williams was sent to Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, and a few months later, the unit marched to Fort Riley, Kansas, and then on to Fort Harker, Kansas, and next to Fort Union, New Mexico, and lastly, in October, the regiment moved to Fort Cummings, New Mexico. They were stationed there for eight months to protect miners from Apache attack. During this time, Williams contracted smallpox and was hospitalized. Williams would rejoin her company in New Mexico and possibly due to the effects of smallpox or the heat or the months of marching, but her body was showing signs of strain and her health was failing. She was recorded as being in four different hospitals on five separate occasions and still no one knew that she was a woman. It wasn't until June 6 of 1868 when the company marched to Fort Bayard, New Mexico, and in July 13th, she was admitted into Fort Bayard Hospital, this time diagnosed with neuralgia, which is a catch-all term for acute intermittent nerve pain. It was during this hospitalization that she was finally discovered as a woman. On October 14, 1868, William Cathy was discharged from Fort Bayard with a certificate of disability, which included statements from her captain and from the post assistant surgeon. And the captain stated that Williams had been under his command since May 20th, 1867 and had since been feeble, both physically and mentally, and had been quite unfit for duty. And his condition predates her enlistment. Over her two-year stint with the Army, Williams participated in regular garrison duties, but there was no record that she actually saw any direct combat while enlisted. She was honorably discharged, and her legacy is being the first and only female Buffalo soldier to serve. Following her discharge, Kathy Williams went on to work as a cook for Fort Union, New Mexico, and then moved to Pueblo, Colorado, where she got married. Their marriage ended poorly when her husband stole money and a team of horses from her. Williams had him arrested and then moved to Trinidad, Colorado, where she made a living as a laundress, as a part-time nurse, and may have owned a boarding house. It was around this time that her story first became public when a reporter from the St. Louis Daily Times heard a rumor of a 
a female African-American that had served in the army and came to interview her. Her life and military service was published in the paper in January 2nd of 1876. Some years later, her health started failing again and she was hospitalized in early 1890 for almost a year and a half. By the time she left the hospital, she was almost completely broke and in June of 1891, she filed for a disability pension from the United States Army. Her application claimed that she suffered from deafness, rheumatism, and neuralgia, and that she had contracted all while she was in the military. Although there was a precedent for granting pensions to female soldiers, Deborah Sampson and Molly Williams had disguised themselves as men in the Revolutionary War and had all been granted their pensions. When the doctor employed by the United States Pension Bureau examined Kathy Williams, she was definitely suffering from diabetes. She had all her toes amputated and was walking with a crutch. The doctor decided that she did not qualify to disability payments, stating that no disability existed. Further, they found that their discharge certificate indicated her feeble condition predated her enlistment and was not due to service. Lastly, and most obviously, her service in the army was not legal. Any type of pension, disability, or otherwise would thus be denied. Afterwards, what happened to Kathy Williams is unknown. It is assumed that she died shortly after being denied her pension, sometime between 1892 and 1900, because she no longer appears on census rolls after 1900. Thank you. This has been One My Black History. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, please hit the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in my Patreon page or my Buy Me Coffee in the description below. And you can find more content like this at my channel or at OneMyHistory.com. Peace.